friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall Ray. And I'm Janelle down here hiding from an intruder that's trying to kill me. And I refuse to get up. Uh, well, we're, we're being don't attacked. worry. I will get the intruder if he comes near. Yeah, except for you were just prepared. torturing me. Yeah, I was telling her that he was on her back. And There's wasn't. a friggin' moth. We started off last week's episode talking a about friggin the mo- moth. <laughs> it's a friggin' moth alert. <laughs> hey, I don't want to demonetize the first 30 seconds. There's a freaking moth alert. This is really hard to sit like this. Should I st- sit up or just stay down? Oh, it's I going say you down just the do wall. the whole episode down there. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, I look so insane to the viewfinder. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, guys, we are so happy to be back. Or I am, at least. It's yeah. been a minute since I've been on the show. Last time I was on this couch, Marlena was here. True. That was a fire episode. It was fiery. <laughs> Spicy. Yes, yes. yes. Thank yeah. you to Marlena for coming all the way out here. That was super fun. It was. Um, and then you guys did a great episode without me last week. I, I watched that. This is great, actually. I like it's this It's a really big here. work. No. Carly's oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I meant to really neck, big work. <laughs> neck workout. Um, yes, last week's episode was crazy. Ew, dude, he's ew. Oh, God. He's living. No, well, he shouldn't be. Oh, don't um, hate on him. But yeah, we talked about the craziest <laughs> freaking scam, which a lot of the people in the comments yeah. think that they planned they it all. They planned it reading. all, which I still don't think that. I think, well, there was a lot of people that said they think they that it really happened, but then they made it into a big thing and made money off of it and whatever. But it's like, it's their well, s- trauma to yeah. to do that with. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. A lot of people were arguing, oh, um, you know, if they had, if the adoption really did happen, that they would have, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> that if, the, if the adoption really did happen, that they would just be like putting their kids on, uh, you know, YouTube all the time. But I'm like, well, that would have happened regardless if there was adoption versus biological child mm-hmm. so that i don't really understand how that has anything to do with the, f- the fact that they were trying to adopt kids yeah and a lot of people said that she i don't know the name of the couple or many details bella. about them but a lot of people are saying bella is like part of a mlm and yeah but okay again so is she a victim of an mlm or right. i mean well also like if let's say she's willingly you know she knows that mlms are bad and <laughs> that, that they're very <laughs> you know, oftentimes scamming people, even if she knows that there's a big difference between, you know, willingly being yeah. a part of an MLM and then, you know, having being a part of an adoption scam. Yeah. It's like, well, those things, those things can exist at the same time. And does that mean she deserved it? Or I don't know really what the point of that right. was. I think that would be pretty elaborate to, to stage. Right. I mean, I don't know, but I don't know the whole details on it. And also the, it was so sad watching their family and friends react to it. I'm like, were they in on it too then? Or did they like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, he's on the ceiling. I'm coming up. But if he comes back down, I'm going back down. Yeah, maybe I should do some more research on that one. Because I don't I don't know. I don't understand how that, that would be really hard to fake and to make a nursery and, do, and to scam all their family members. That's what I'm I don't know. I don't know. I felt... I watched it. I felt bad for them. I did too. Felt like it was genuine, but... I don't know. There were there were a lot of mixed comments. Maybe I'm missing something here. But yeah. Anyway, uh, you guys, I missed you. I missed being here. I missed you too. We missed yeah. you too, Kendall. I've we been did. everywhere, man, since I've been here. I've been all over the country. What? Traveling since far and wide. Yeah. Just got back from the mountains. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. And then Forgot. I was in South Carolina. Yeah. You've I been picked everywhere. up an accent down there. Oh, by golly. Mm-hmm. We used to the accent. Man, I got to tell you, I love the South. Do Southern you? people, they're so friendly. Are they? Southern hospitality is real thing. Is it? It is. Did you have some sweet tea? I didn't have any sweet tea, but I... What? What, what is happening here? The lights are going... Or there's a the moth lights in there. will flicker no, on, there's on and moth off. In the lights. <laughs> and the walls Wait, will weird. ooze green slime. Wow, this is kind of cool. Let's just roll with it. Anyway, no, um, this is annoying. South Carolina was really cool. Loved it. What is happening? No, you have to get up. And get up. <laughs> Why do I have to get up and fix it? Because of the producers. <laughs> you do it. What the hell? We're going to just keep going. This is um, like not good. Yeah, I don't want to trigger anyone I don't here. I will. Oh, oh, that was worse. <laughs> we need to put on a warning on screen for people. Oh my God, this is horrible. Anyway, let's keep going while the light's right, off, it. though. Um, you picked up you an guys accent. Keep picking. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. You love... Oh. We're back. What? What Curly got it. 
Do Night. you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So keep telling us about your southern hospitality. Yeah, it was very nice. Tea. Very nice. Then you got some mountain hospitality. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I did get some mountain hospitality. It's nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. Love that for you. I uh, went to Manitou Springs because Curly kept uh, recommending it. Saying, "Remember, mm-hmm. you guys? She went to what you thought was Manatee Springs. Yes, Manatee. No, yes, oh, yes she did. Manatee. Yes. like the animal. Yep. And she brought I us the, always the was fresh confused. spring water. It mm-hmm. tasted like a little the bit mildewy. Waters. I tried mm. it. It's it giving spicy. mildew. You know, it tastes different to every person, though. That's what's really interesting. Ooh. It's well, depending on what you need. Like, if it tastes good to you, that means you're low on iron. There's all these different. Things. Well, also there there are different um, fountains that uh, different springs that have yeah higher concentration of different minerals, and they're just running yeah. all the time. So you can just go up to it, put your hands under it, fill your water bottle. They're just all over the place down there. It's really cool. I love Manitou Springs, and they, they also have a pickle juice. They had fountain. a pickle shack, you guys, and so a <laughs> pickle fountain, <laughs> a pickle fountain. I brought you guys some pickle Should juice. That I thought up. we could try. Yeah, she's um looking very Ooh, weird, and yeah. I remember the lady told me something when I bought this, like. Have you ever something. had this before? And I was like, no. She's like, well, it's not like normal pickle juice. And then she said something else. And I don't remember because I always have anxiety when I'm checking out at places and I just black out. <laughs> I don't remember what she said, but um, we're going to try it. You guys want to try it right now? Yeah. All right. Hit us up. What if it's like mushrooms? Well, then we're all going to be tripping. Uh, I bet it would have been more like expensive. Real world. <laughs> this was 15 bucks, though. That's that, pretty expensive for pickle water. Yeah, it is. Well, a little, a little more than that. You want that? Yeah. If you like it, I'll give you more, but I don't want to waste her. Mm, smells kind of weird. You guys want to come get some? It smells kind of like... It doesn't really smell pickly. Does it smell like a... Did they also sell pickles there? Yes, I brought you some pickles as well. They had all types of pill- pickles, honey, jerky, oh, salsas. Oh, that's some good yeah, stuff. Baby. Okay. All right. You know, what is that one brand that you really like? Grillo. Grillo. Did you see they came out with a pico de gallo? Yes. Like a pickle de gallo. Ooh, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, I don't know where to find it. Wait, a pickle de gallo? I've been looking for it for months. Don't know where to find it. Yeah, our friend Taylor actually told me about that. <sighs> Cheers. Get it. Little hose. Cheers. Oh. Little hose. It smells like a... Mm. Ew. It's very strong. It's not... Tastes like a pickle. I feel like maybe she told me to water it down. He's like just vinegar. Or dilute it. You know what it tastes like? Ooh. <laughs> it tastes like a. It's like, almost got like apple cider vinegar. It tastes yeah. like a like like <clears throat> like these chips actually. Like, but why I like ranch. it in small yeah. sips. Ew! You know how your I'm mouth and throat burns after you throw up. That's what <laughs> <it's doing. laughs> tastes like vomit. <laughs> well, I'm glad he spent 15 bucks on that for you bitches. I'm grateful. I honestly feel like it needs to be diluted. It's not pickly enough. I think enough. maybe she told me something like that. <laughs> but it should. She said something. Let's call her up. I already tried. I already called. Yeah, I'll call she's again. like, let's, let's call Tim's the pickle I'm shack. On Tuesdays and she literally said that. I'm here every day. She said she's me. off on Tuesdays, but it's Monday. So then what the hell are you doing? Tammy, you should be working. Tammy Sue, answer. Her name is not Tammy Sue, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. That just hit my stomach and it's hurting. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel good. Oh, no. Let's see. What, what if it's like aloe vera type of stuff? Will you read the ingredients? Oh, there's no. <laughs> no, there are. I read them. Give them to me. Oh, where it's like, is it? It's like vinegar. It's literally Acid water, reflux. vinegar, dill weed, sage, garlic, salt, secret spices. She's not secret answering. With a little spices. side of <laughs> all right. She's, bile she's from not in stomach. apparently. Okay, um, kind of when these pickles taste like apple cider vinegar, which I I'm gonna start trying to drink that every day. It's supposed to be so good for you. It is good for you. You can also just take pills, but that's true. But it doesn't absorb as well. I've heard. I believe. It. Okay, I also brought you pickles. Let's judge Thank those. Those, look, the, these the pickle look, judge. those look delicious. What kind of pickles are they? You should probably know? get some paper towels. Yeah. Um, <gasps> I say screw it. They are mm, I really farmhouse. Want, ooh, I bet those garlic cloves at the bottom are good. Mm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Would you like the chode? No. I'll take the chode. <laughs> Only Kendall would Curly want wants chode. the chode. <laughs> oh, they're pickle halves. Damn. <gasps> Is that a jalapeno in there? Yeah. Mm. Damn. Oh, I'll take the other chode. It's fine. All right. Hey, do you want to you want a chode? I'll fish out a chode for you. No, actually, I'd rather not. Cindy just says she doesn't want a chode. Cindy likes it big and long. Mm. Yeah, thick and juicy. Oh, okay. she said thick and juicy. Oh, there's a th- big thick boy in here. Save her for later. All right, what do you think of these? Your okay. picks. They had many flavors. Mm. This is the one I decided to get you guys. Mmm. 
Ooh, mm. these smell good. Fresh, right? These are really good. Very fresh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Holly liked them. Mm. Guys, Holly is obsessed with pickles. Girl after my own heart. Like, it's insane. Josh is like, she's truly mm-hmm. your daughter. Mm-hmm. No, I want more. You want more? Yeah, I only had a little piece. There you go. Um, but anyway, happy to be back. Um, we have a huge announcement. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. <laughs> we almost forgot. Our merch. We have new merch. Yes, finally. It took so long to get everything, you know, finalize everything mm-hmm. the way we want it. Take, mm-hmm. Doing it merch yourself really does take a long time. Sure does. So we, we have it, launched a new merch collection, which is available now at milehiremerch.com. It's available for all three of our Mile Higher Media podcasts. And um, our collection here, we're each wearing one of our pieces, mm-hmm. which we designed ourselves. We we didn't make it. We worked with a designer nope, who we was more talented. It, we sewed everything ourselves. <laughs> Every seam is... But the concepts are ours. Yes. yes so of course. We love that. Kendall, start us off. Um, so I am wearing a piece that we are still deciding the name on. We have been debating. I want to go with Audio. 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 Like A-U-D-I. Like Audio. Audio. Yeah, I think that's good. I like it. So this one is our only long sleeve in the collection. It's light pink and we have our headphones and it makes, you know, the little cord Mm -hmm. turns into the sesh. So cute. I love how this one turned out. Mm -hmm. I love the colors on this guy. Also, just FYI, for all the merch that's being launched, it is all pre-shrunk and a relaxed fit like style. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're so. really, really soft. Yeah. Yes. Big shout out to Sydney here. She's the one who got this collection from start to finish. Yes. yes. Amazing job as Excited. always. Next up, the one I'm wearing, we're calling this Disco Sesh. It's so freaking cute. This one might <laughs> oh, be I'm my favorite one. It. I think it might be my favorite it's too. It's so cute. And the colors are so good. Yes. We have a little disco ball. We he's went back the, and forth on those colors a lot. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love how he's giving me a little peace sign. I love his little glasses, his little shoes. So cute. So cute. I'm obsessed. Sydney is wearing our Take One T. We had to do a clapper board, obviously. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. You know it. So cute. Spicy vibe. Scene 420. Denver, mm-hmm. Colorado. You know how we do it. And then on the front, it says Take One. So cute. I love the colors on that one. And then Miss Corelli here is wearing a t-shirt version mm-hmm. of our very popular pickle, pickle passion. Yes, our pickle passion. Ooh. We love this design. You guys loved it so much. You sold it out last time mm-hmm. incredibly quick, faster than all our other pieces. So we knew we had to bring it back for summer in a t-shirt That's style. That's right. And it is slightly different colors. I mean, overall, it's the same. But the pink in the long sleeve from last collection, it was like a really hot yeah. pink. This is more we of like a... a faded look i guess you could say a little mm-hmm. bit um yeah. it's really really it's more cute. vintage looking i think yeah, it's very I comfortable agree. super comfortable yeah yeah it's a little vintage I mean, they looking. all are but so yeah yeah that's all available we at milehairmerch.com thanks in advance for supporting our shows for real mm. anyway these pickles are delicious i'm very good i drank some of the juice from that pickle jar mm. but the juice is yucky the juice is yucky it's oh it's too vinegary yeah. it is yeah, I can't do the I juice. Wish I'm I wish I remember what she said to me about mm. it. But I think I had be, to try it, you know. I think it would be good in a Bloody Mary. Yeah, oh. maybe you're supposed to use it for something. She said something, just didn't listen. Mm. Anyway, you know how that goes. So my baby is only 10 months old and she is already obsessed with screens. Every time she sees my phone, she sees my Apple Watch, she is fascinated by it. So I'm always trying to find other things to keep her attention and keep her away from looking at my phone or the TV if that's on. And it can be really hard to find ways to keep your kids busy, challenged, and entertained, and most importantly, off of screens. And so I found this service called KiwiCo that does the legwork for you so you can spend quality time tackling projects together. KiwiCo is a super cool subscription box for your kids that offers multiple lines of fun and enriching projects that are designed to spark creativity, innovation, and learning. They have developmentally appropriate projects for every child and interest from level newborns to teens. KiwiCo has developed over 2,000 projects in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Simply select a crate or take their quiz to find the perfect match. Pick a delivery plan and watch your kids' excitement when they get their crates in the mail. Each crate comes with projects that will keep them busy for hours and off of their screens. 
I told KiwiCo that my daughter loves animals and loves stuffed animals. So they put together a panda crate that had tons of little toys in there for her, a lot of wooden toys, which are her favorite, surprisingly. And she has been so into what they sent. They also sent her a little stuffed panda that she's obsessed with. And it's been so fun to watch her play with all the new toys. Since your kids are constantly changing, their interests are constantly changing, it's nice to have new toys coming in that are specifically designed for their age. And I'm super excited for when she's a little older and she can do more of their project crates and we can do them together. KiwiCo has created awesome family experiences for the last 10 years with over 40 million crates delivered and over 20,000 five-star reviews. So redefine play with KiwiCo. Right now, get 50% off your first month's crate starting at just $14 a month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com, promo code SESH. 50% off your first month plus free shipping at Kiwi, that's Kiwi like the fruit, K-I-W-I-C-O dot com, promo code SESH, KiwiCo dot com, promo code SESH. So to start out here, we have a little CSI. So this has been happening for a while. It actually happened back in 2021, but news broke recently a couple weeks ago that Former Olympian and YouTuber, who's 29 years old, Trevor Jacob, is facing prison time and Mm -hmm. has admitted to purposely crashing his plane on YouTube for views and to promote a company's wallet. Hell Uh, yeah. One of those uh, Ridge wallets. Yep. What it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember tons of people were sponsored by them. Um, So this happened on November 24th, 2021. He took a solo flight from Lompoc City Airport in Lompoc, California. That was destined for Mammoth Lakes, a town in California's Sierra Nevada mountains, um, where Trevor said he planned to spread the ashes of his best friend. So investigators found out after, which many people figured this out way before, you know, this news broke. Yeah. There were many things wrong with this video from the jump. It's pretty obvious, especially once you know that he purposely did this, that it was all purposeful because he mounted multiple cameras on the plane and equipped himself with a parachute, a video camera and a selfie stick. Now, he talks about how he always has a parachute, how you should always have a parachute on, which most people like have them in the plane. Most people don't wear them all the time. And if you look back at his old videos, he's not wearing said parachute Mm. in those, but... mm. So two days later, Trevor called the National Transportation Safety Board and reported a plane crash, which immediately prompted an investigation. The NTSB told Trevor that it was his responsibility to preserve the crash site and provide coordinates, coordinates, (laughs) coordinates of the crash location. And he agreed that he would share the site of the wreck, but he instead lied to authorities saying he did not know where the crash site was. Officials then reported that on December 20th, 2021, Jacob and a friend flew to the site to remove the wreckage of the plane crash and loaded it onto a trailer attached to Jacob's pickup truck. Federal investigators said that he then took the wreckage of the plane to Lompoc City Airport, where he cut it up, Mm. destroyed it, and threw away the evidence of the crash. Trevor admitted this in his plea agreement and then went back to the crash site to clean up the wreckage to prevent federal authorities from investigating Then on December 23rd, roughly a month after the crash, Trevor uploaded a video on YouTube called I Crashed My Airplane. And I think we should check some of this out because it is wild, people. Now, this video only has 4 million views after all of this. So I'm imagining it didn't get much traction to begin with. Yeah. It doesn't seem like 4 million views after two over two years would be worth crashing a plane. For a company. You'd think that he did it for you know, he would expect a lot more yeah. than that. I think that was kind of his thinking. Yeah. Um, and now if you go to it, the comments are actually hilarious. Oh, really? Yeah. They're like, this is the first guy to jump from a plane and land in jail. Oh, actually, I saw So like, excellent job. Try this again in 20 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> someone was like, oh, this is exactly what you do. My friend in aviation school said that you always got to have your selfie stick ready to go at all times. That's right, baby. So, Must yeah, this is um, actually really scary and dangerous what he did oh, yeah. obviously so let's take a look here so he's fine everything's cool and then he starts to freak Holy out i'm over the mountains and i get out of here and out he dips he bails and leaves the plane flying so here's important to note too 
I'm going to tell you where to pause it. Right here, pause. Okay, so as you can see in the bottom here, I've seen other people who are like, I assume aviation experts were like watching this video and saying that there seems to have been several places that he could have tried to crash land the plane. Ah, on um, the ground. So he kind of gave himself away by showing that there was these spaces. I mean, I, I'm just repeating what they say. I don't have any idea what a safe <laughs> landing space would look like, but that is something that a lot of people pointed out. So we already had the the parachute ready to go. He's got all he has so many different angles of this as mm -hmm. it crashes. Let's keep watching. The plane is just frozen. Yeah. And here goes. So we kind of cut this up. Yeah. The full version is available on YouTube if you want to see it. Yeah. So here he is now landing. He found it by Abby's song. Oh. Oh. In a tree bush. Oh my thing. gosh. That fucking hurt. Oh my gosh. Get me out of this. Get the off of me. Come on. Oh. I guess I should probably document what's going on. I cut my finger pretty bad. Got my elbow. I'm just so happy to be alive. Oh, there's Jake literally nothing. The plane. No, anything. No water. I had a water jug in the back. I have no idea where I am. Thank you, higher power, for watching over me. So he totally could have died, um, obviously, from the crash, but also not having materials and not knowing where he was going yeah. to land exactly. Well, because then he's like, I have no water. And his yeah. whole video is like, there yeah. was supposed to be water in my plane. There's no water. And, and he's kind of dramatic about the water, don't you feel? Yeah. Because he's like, it's been 45 minutes without water. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's so hot. I'm so thirsty. Yeah. He ends up walking, he said, like five or six miles. And then he hears the sound of a cow. And he follows the cow mooing and somehow runs into people. People. Yeah. And, and it was like, dark by then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, mm, yeah. Really weird. So really fucking stupid. And people will do just about anything for views, as we know. And this is no exception. So I imagine, how much would a plane like that be? I have no idea. Pretty pricey, right? It's a looked like a looked like a paper plane. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was pretty dinky, but it's got to be worth more than four thousand four million YouTube views. And well, I guess he had the sponsorship deal. Yeah, who knows how much they paid him? But you Which, would think your life is worth more than that. So I'm confused because I didn't see the sponsor in the actual. Video. Neither did I. So, but all these outlets are reporting that he was sponsored by this wallet right but i didn't find i didn't see anything I in the actual thing. video there was nothing like oh i crashed a plane this video is sponsored by like well it could be possible that it was in there originally and, out. and he cut maybe they wanted him to remove it mm, maybe um, they may have with all of this yeah i'm not really sure not be part of that yeah but yeah that's what's reported is that it was part of a sponsorship deal and um, people were very sus of this mm -hmm. you know kind of from the start like kendall had said yeah, there were definitely people who were like, wow, this is crazy. But then most of the comments were very like, dude, what the fuck? He, How are you so prepared for this? Right. And, and if you look right before he goes out of the plane, he takes his selfie stick out. People are like, why were you taking yeah, your selfie stick out? That's your priority. Well, yeah, right. And, and why then, were you not trying to safely land the plane? Also, he had a fire extinguisher thing on him, which is not mm -hmm. something that you normally have on your body. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, there were multiple comments pointing out that he made no attempt to try and land the plane safely, took out the camera and then mm -hmm. just jumped out. Um, he admitted in his plea agreement that he filmed the video as part of a product sponsorship deal. So there must have been the sponsor in there at some yeah, point. Yeah, at some point. I don't really know. Yeah. So for a while he was trying to not confirm or deny. About mm -hmm. eight months ago, Vice News did a, a little thing on him, which kind of glorified him a bit i thought yeah, it didn't why really did come on that? him very hard i don't know it was very odd um hasn't vice kind of like they're not what they used to be yeah. i'll say that <laughs> i was gonna say what's the wording for that yeah they've i'm not too much of a fan of them like it used to be anymore but um yeah in that video they ask him straight up did you crash your plan on purpose and he's like he like smiles like he's clearly trying to hint that he did but he's like i'm not allowed to talk about it and he's like, it's interesting. The way he makes light of the whole thing, it's interesting to see people's reactions, blah, blah, blah. Some people hate it. But he's like, he basically in the video is like, I've never really given a fuck. And that's what other people said about him. He he's the care. type of guy who just does not give a fuck about anything. Hell yeah, brother. We love mm -hmm. that. 
Yep. So he also admitted to lying to federal investigators after submitting an aircraft accident report that falsely claimed the plane fully lost power roughly half an hour after takeoff. And on May 11th, 2023, recently, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Central District of California announced that Trevor pleaded guilty to a felony charge of destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. Obviously, this is a major crime And the U.S. Attorney's Office said the charge carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in federal prison and that Trevor is expected to make a court appearance in the coming weeks. So we'll continue to cover this. There's been a lot of debate over 20 years. Is that too much? Obviously, he probably won't actually get 20 years. Right. That's maximum. I think it's way too much. I mean, I think what he did is dumb. He didn't hurt anyone else, though. But he could have. He he could have, but he didn't. It's just... It's really hard because, I mean, first of all, it's such a privilege to get your pilot's license. There's a lot of, yeah, you know, t- t- power to be able to, it's something that you really earn. And to it's kind of a slap in the face to people who have not only have their license, but also have crashed in the past. Mm-hmm. He could have hit campers. He could have hit animals. He could have started a forest fire. That is, yeah, that's a big red flag because obviously California is bone dry in the desert. and yeah. They already have so many issues with forest fires. And obviously they got to be kind of strict on this kind of stuff because other people could could do it. Yeah, and- how many people are gonna be like, oh, that was a great idea. He only got five months in prison. I'm going to go crash my own plane. Are you kidding me? A lot of there are a lot of dumb people out there. To- people do a lot of <laughs> whack ass shit on the Internet for views. Clout is above all else in some people's minds. If there's a chance they could get away with it, maybe I could fake it better than Trevor did. And if my chance is this, you know. I just think 20 years is absurd. I do too. I mean, I'm not people who are years. R-wording people are getting less time than that. I completely agree. Or murdering people are getting less but time than that. But also concealing the evidence here and trying to, you know, fuck up a federal investigation, I think is pretty wild. Yeah. I don't think 20 years. I do think he should serve prison time. Oh, though. I agree. I think he should serve prison. I just don't think he should be serving 20 years. I personally, I don't even think he should be. Ser- oh, no, our light's flickering again. I think 20 years is too long. And I think 10 years is too long. I think it could be like five years. I don't know what the right sentence is because I don't have anything in my mind to compare it to. Um, Clearly, he got his pilot's license taken away. Yeah. Obviously. I don't know. I think it's definitely debatable. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I definitely think he should get jail time. But the question is how much. But it, it's it's very serious. That could have been horrible. What if it he could have been campers? Hor- no, or- yeah, it could have been horrible. I agree. So I guess, but... Don't you think that, like, if that had happened and he did end up hurting someone or um, starting a fire or whatever, then, yes, obviously he should be getting more. But he that didn't happen. His thing was very stupid, but he's lucky that it wasn't worse. And I feel like, therefore, his punishment should be slightly lower. I see what you're saying. I don't don't know what the right answer is. If he hurt someone, not Mm -hmm. even killed them, but if you like injured someone or hit a camper or started a fire, 20 years, yeah, get your ass in jail. But like, Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's a little excessive for what he did. I think think it's really dumb. I think 20 years is excessive. Yeah, I've seen some uh, pilots say that they think he should get life in prison. Damn. Yeah. Life? Which is not even on the table. It's not possible. But a lot of people were arguing that in the beginning. I've seen several people say that. Mm, maybe I'm going to get ripped in the comments then for having this opinion. I just think it's too much. I don't think you're going to get ripped necessarily. I think a lot of people agree with you. I've seen a lot of people reacting to this on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And most people think 20 years is outrageous. Yeah. Um, I think you should never be able to fly a plane ever again. No, for sure. And he was like talking in the Vice thing. I'm hoping to get my pilot's license back soon. But you think he is trolling maybe. during the Vice thing? Oh, totally. Like totally he was totally. just acting so yeah. ridiculous during it that yeah. I... I don't think he actually believes that. I think he's yeah, just saying not. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think the guy gives a fuck really about anyone or anything. But my point I was about to make before the light rudely interrupted was most of the time when you are sponsored by something on a YouTube video, not necessarily for, for podcasts, but for YouTube videos, you have to send it to the ads to like approve. Well, sometimes of. you just send the ad, not the whole content. That's true. Like for mine, that's what I do. That's true. That's I just true. send them my ad. So who knows? And they they probably had him pull it is my guess. Um, After there's really like, a sponsor oh. in there. <sighs> Wild. Yeah. yeah I want to hear from you guys, though, on what you think an appro- appropriate sentence or punishment. Maybe you don't think he should serve any jail time. He should just get fines out the ass. What do we think? Mm. I'm going to stick with five to ten years in okay. my opinion. I'd say, yeah, at least five. 
Sessies, let's take a moment to check in with ourselves. How would you rate your relationship with yourself lately? Whether you're feeling confident and want to explore your innermost desires further, or could you as a little boost in self-love, Dipsy's sexy audio stories are here to help. Because Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. And they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Dipsy has something for everyone. Their catalog is huge, whether you're looking for stories about second chance romances or hot and heavy hookups, maybe even a vacation fling. And Dipsy is extremely inclusive. That's another reason why I love them. They have stories for straight and queer listeners and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. They even have stories voiced by celebrities such as Serenus Jackson, ER Fightmaster, and Luke Cook. And new content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they even have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories that you can read. So as the weather gets hotter, maybe you're looking to get hotter in the bedroom with a partner or maybe just yourself. Well, Dipsy has something for you. Let it be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. All right. Well, guess what? I have a Dream special but- guest here today. Hell yeah. A little surprise for you. Oh my God. What's the guest? Well, here she is. This is uh, my grandma. Oh my God. <laughs> Here she is. She's ready to get hyphy. This is Grandma Sid. Grandma Sid. Come Grandma have a seat. Grandma Sid. You like this? She's here. Hello, Granny. I am here to get party down. Here. Here. Is this because I made fun of you for being old the other week? Yeah, both of you ripped her apart. <laughs> and all people know that. People in the comments were like, hyphy. <laughs> well, they like the hyphy, but. And I'm just so wise, you know. No, Sydney, this is a great look this for you. This is like honestly kind of sexy. Yeah, you should, you should go do home this for Jared. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh yeah, get naked. <laughs> <laughs> get high feet tonight. Gosh. Look at this. I got her a blow up cane. Yep. Damn. I got two grandma just in case. Said, wait, can my grandma hip. said like make a normal appearance <laughs> in, the so- in the show. Yeah, I'm down. We'll do your grandma voice. Oh gosh, that's hard. Oh my gosh, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. I'm even sweating. Wow. Damn, you look good. Where's the Sid. pearl necklace? It came with a pearl necklace too. Yeah, the pearl necklace wasn't very hard to get on oh, off okay. with me being so old and having to do it on my own. Oh, our <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I love this look yeah. for you. I even got like a little cap. It looks so, so my good. He's literally wearing wig. a wig cap under this. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, Sydney. It's this is really hot, but it's so comfortable. Grandma, Sydney. <laughs> I was supposed to have her come in before we started the story, and I forgot. So have you just been sitting like, back there? Yeah, and then Tom's like <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yeah, it's just me. But yeah, oh my so. God, I love this. So you guys mustered this up? Oh, yeah, because so I was listening strange. to the show, and I'm like, you bitches called her old. Like, Five times. What <laughs> is so this? St- I leave no. you guys just get mean. <laughs> Wait, we really did that five times? I don't know five. No. It was often. No, okay. Can oh, I can no. I admit something That's though? Up. So oh, yeah. no, so that 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 week that we recorded, I texted Sydney that Sunday and I was like, hey Sydney, I was like, I'm really sorry for calling you old. I was like, I didn't mean it. Like I was like, I'm sorry for hurt your feelings. I I don't oh, think yeah, you're actually old. old. Like I don't really yeah. think that I felt bad about it. So this is amazing. <laughs> I love it. No, I you're not give old. It back. You're not old. Honestly, yeah. I felt like a loser for not knowing what Hyphy was. We're Carly and I are the losers. We're the losers, yeah. Because everyone yeah. everyone in the comments was like ripping us for not knowing. And also people in the comments were loving you last episode. There were so many comments about Lots of Sydney love. Lots wow. of Sydney love. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's really nice to hear. Well, I would like to do a quick interview with you. Can you tell us your greatest ap- piece of advice that you've learned in your How 80 old are years? You? 80 years? Yeah, I'm about 85. 85. <laughs> Damn, you look um, good. good as hell. And Your tits are nice and happy. <laughs> skin of a baby. Yep. Mm. Vaseline. <laughs> that's a secret. And SPF every day. But Ooh. um, the one most valuable thing I've ever learned <laughs> is probably 
just don't give a fuck. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, you like that? You hear that? Trevor, Trevor Jacob would agree. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like it, don't do it. Mm. Ooh. Grandma said it's do wise. Do what you want. Do what yeah. you want and fuck the rest of them who care. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I love that. <laughs> okay. And um, can you tell us about your love life over the years? Oh, it's spicy. I uh, was going to ask keep you. keep it really... That was my question. How, what do you do to keep it spicy off your 85 years? Um, we use our canes Ooh. a lot. Oh, in Ooh. bed? Yeah. Bed For like choking? Canes? Or like whacking. Whack, yeah. Ooh. Big whackers. <laughs> <laughs> that is sexy. Yeah. Damn. Um, what else? We listen to Turn Down for What? Oh. <laughs> we get down. <laughs> they turn the fuck down for what? <laughs> I'm just burning up in my uh, little cardigan here, but that you know, is amazing. Keep it, keep it conservative, Grandma mm-hmm. Sydney. Yeah, definitely don't want to show any chest. No, no honestly, chest. the gray hair is kind of a look for you. I kind of think you should do it. It's a big trend. I agree. It looks like yeah, it really? <laughs> looks really good. Yeah. It's silver and shiny. Should I just go walk in the back and be like, Ugh. you should yeah, just you start should. doing just that start and around. don't even address <laughs> it. Say don't say anything. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Liam! Oh my god, Grandma Sid. There she is. Thank you, Sydney. What in your eighty-five years is your greatest accomplishment? I'm still waiting. Oh shit! I like that answer. Many years ahead. Many years ahead. Yes, accomplishments are coming. I'm not planning to die anytime soon. (laughs) No way. What's your goal age? Your goal? What (laughs) that? Don't ask someone who's old that. I think that's better than when are you planning to die? <laughs> that's what's your goal the same age? thing. What's your if you could live to a certain what's the point where you wouldn't want to live past? How about that? What's the oldest you wouldn't want to be? Probably 90. Wait, so you oh, only so have like, five oh. years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I just want to be able to enjoy my life. And right now I'm doing that. So we'll just see. Okay. So you have five years to have your greatest accomplishment. Do you have any goals for that accomplishment? Oh, I want to do wheelchair racing. Oh, oh shit. shit. So you have a wheelchair and a cane? Yep. For when my legs get tired. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you have a record in the wheelchair racing? Yes. I'm about, well, well oh, God, I can't remember. Oh, Grandma 17 Sid. minute miles, maybe? 17 minute miles. Yeah. God, my. That's one thing my uh, memory is going out a little bit. Well, you know. Oh, but, you know. It's all right. I think about, se- yeah, 17 minute miles. But. <laughs> The other, the other lady's got nothing on me. Yeah, fuck them hoes. Fuck those bitches. <laughs> and fuck them kids, too. And girl, she says, turn down for what? Fuck them kids and fuck you, too. Well, I'll let you all get back to your show. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma Good Sydney. Night. You can visit us whenever you want. We love you. I'll be back. And I have, I'll have, i have a lot more wise words. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on We're the show. We're looking forward to it. We'll make sure to have you as many times as we can before you die. <laughs> At 90, which is in five years. <laughs> okay, yeah. <gasps> oh my god, All right. five years. Peace out, right. bitches. Get high <laughs> say get high fee. Get let's get happy. Oh happy. Uh, happy. Get high fee, baby. We're gonna listen to some hyphy music. All right, we're gonna listen to some hyphy music tonight. Hell Amazing. Yeah. She's still in character <laughs> off set. She's <laughs> like, like <laughs> Come on, grandma, come sit with me. Hell yeah. That, that was whole get it was only twenty bucks. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Amazon. The sweater? Yep. We it, came up with this. We needed fast shipping. Did it? We so what, it was the sweater like a old person sweater? Or is it just a sweater? <laughs> Wait, like, no. Cause actually, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little offended because I've been, I've been looking at the sweater in her office for so long. I was oh like, Sid, I love your sweater it's so cute. much. It's actually so. Kendall's Gen like, Z. did you bring that? To- <laughs> <laughs> I know when I saw it in your office this morning, I was like, you brought this for the costume. That's great. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm a piece I of shit. Why did you Amazon old person? <laughs> No, but that sweater is very Gen Z. Am I correct? It is curly. No, it's fashion very curly. It's, no, I think it's very. It's a very cute sweater. Since I'm not a grandma, I'd wear it with like nut, like just a little bralette underneath. Totally, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. off the shoulder a little bit. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Work it. But it's then, very nineties. But then you show your your skin up here. You know, see, grandma, curly's a big whore. <laughs> 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 just kidding. He's a hottie ho. Hottie ho. Well, oh. can you can you leave on at least the the wig for the, out, the episode? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, and the glasses. You, you got the glasses from Amazon too. This is yeah, a, the whole outfit. Such a good it look came with a pearl me. necklace too, but I too hard my, to get on. Can you help me with my pearls? Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. She's so put clutching the pearls on. her pearls. Well, thank you so much, Sid. 
You look like the hottest grandma I've ever seen. I'd do you. I would too. 10 out of 10. In fact, I think Jared's going to want to get into that That's tonight. That's baby. You <laughs> oh. say, hey, Gilf. Hey, that could be yeah. a good uh, honeymoon night look. Break Damn. that cane out. Break that oh, cane yeah. out. Do some wax. Do you know how funny? I that... wear my big, my Wait. like cute whitey tighties. You should yes. like prank <laughs> yeah. him somehow. Yeah, like be Yo, like, okay, I'm gonna go put on a sexy top or something. And yes, come out be that. like, I need you to wait in bed for me, okay. and then come out. In bed. But tonight, blindfold what yeah. put this on. Blindfold yeah. him. Will you film it if yeah. you do it? Oh my god, that's <laughs> film so his funny. reaction. <laughs> you should just go home. Like, like er. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Oh. Well, today we also are gonna get into some. Am I the asshole? Because it's been a minute, and you guys have been wanting it. So you guys love <laughs> it. We're delivering. That's right. Let's jump right in. You want to start? Sure thing. We have. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Is the camera on her? Damn. Damn. Oh, my. God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take it off. Take Grandma, it off. Grandma, no. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, Sydney's back. Oh, Sydney's back. Hair. Damn. Dude, the glasses are working for you, though. They, you look hot. They are, honestly. I'm Thank into you. that. We should mm-hmm. just pre- start pretending that I need these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, you should just start wearing those in the office. Just, just with the glasses. my chain. Yes, with the chain. People in the back and be like, "What's going on?" <laughs> they like hang like this. Yeah, I know it's freaking sexy. All right, the gavel is here, ready oh, to go. Alrighty then, ready. Oops, another gem just came off. Oh, oh, oops. So now it just says spicky. I do have like glue and stuff here, so if she can be repaired. She can go to the shop. Okay, she needs to go to the shop. The auto body shop. Knock knock. Who's there? Hello. Hello, who? Hello, Fresh, of course. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's your favorite, <laughs> America's favorite meal kit. And my favorite, too. Yeah, America's number one meal kit. My number one meal kit. Me, too. God, we are huge HelloFresh mm. fans in our house. Oh, my gosh. We get it every week. We pay for it ourselves. I always like to make that clear. They're not, like, sending us free boxes. Josh and I choose to buy these every month. And we love them. You guys get it every week. They're too. delicious. I love HelloFresh, especially because recently I just moved and it's been a little bit of a pain in the butt to do the grocery shopping. Oh, and yeah. there's, my house is already a mess. So it's awesome to have pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to my door. Mm-hmm. I can just get to cooking, whip out all the ingredients, get my little recipe card out. Boom. Don't even have to think about it. That's the best part about it all. Mm-hmm. It requires no thinking. Yep. <laughs> That is the best part of it. Also, it is absolutely delicious. What was the last HelloFresh meal you had, if you can remember? Mm, let me see. I think I had some type of like sweet m- miso glazed salmon. Ooh, recently. I've had that one. It's so good. So good. I had a really good shrimp salad recently. Mm, we just made the ramen last night. Ooh, that one's my favorite. Ramen. Oh, have you not had one of their ramen no. before? No. You would love it. It mm. is so good and so easy to make such a unique. And, yes, you know, delicious meal out of the ordinary type of meal. That's I why love I it. love HelloFresh because they will create recipes that you wouldn't, you know, normally think about. And they have you put ingredients together that are very unique and, you know, something that you haven't already done. So that not only are you getting a delicious meal, but you're also learning new cooking techniques and new styles and, you know, how to mix and combine new flavors is the best. Yeah, not only is it more convenient than grocery shopping, but it's actually cheaper too. It's 25% less expensive than takeout. Plus, there's something for everyone, even you picky eaters out there, because they have 40 options every week, and it's really hard to narrow down which ones you're going to get. Plus, my favorite part about it is it helps us reduce food waste. I hate when I look up a recipe, I have to buy some ingredient that I'm not going to you know, mm-hmm. use in all my, my other recipes. My thing is always cilantro. They make you buy, or parsley, mm-hmm. they make you buy so much of yeah. it. And then I end up throwing it away. See, this is why you could have bunnies, though, because they eat all our, <laughs> our veggie scraps. <laughs> or you can just get HelloFresh. Yes. Then you don't That's waste true. your food. That's true. Because there are things that I get, and then I have to throw out the rest of it yep. because it goes bad, and I can't figure out another way to use it. And then it's a waste of money and a waste of food, and I hate that. So HelloFresh completely eliminates that. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH16 and use code SESH16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash SESH16. Use code SESH16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. All right. Am I the asshole for lying to my wife about the length of my work trip to avoid a vacation with the in-laws? Ooh. My wife and her family had a five-day-long family vacation in July. It was at an Airbnb where everyone, who was my wife, her siblings, their spouses, and her parents stayed. 
I happened to have a work trip that same week as the vacation, but it was only two days long. So technically, I could have gone for the last few days of the vacation. Here's the thing about my wife's family. They're very rowdy. They yell to communicate, get drunk together often, and have no respect for each other's privacy and ask very invasive questions. Wow, sounds like my family. I was just about to say, <laughs> that sounds like my family vacation. Yeah, on which I'm like all for. Whatever. I thrive in that environment. Me too. There have been times when I've asked my wife if I can skip family reunions and birthday parties, but she gets very mad at me and says it would be super rude to avoid her family. So when I found out that my out-of-state work trip was the same week as the family vacation, I decided to fib to my wife a bit. I told my wife that my work trip was four days long and that it wouldn't make sense for me to travel to the Airbnb to stay for only one day. My -hmm. wife agreed to this, so I went on the work trip and enjoyed a few days of peace and quiet at our house while my wife enjoyed the vacation with her family. A few weeks went by and I was having some coworkers over for drinks. Uh Uh-oh. You didn't tell your coworkers your lie? Big mistake. My wife came home from work early and started chatting with my coworkers, and she told them about the wonderful vacation she had with her family a few weeks ago, and my coworkers asked me why I didn't join. I told them that the vacation was during my work trip. My coworkers then said our work trip was only two days long, so why didn't I catch the end of the family vacay? The look on my wife's face was murderous. After my coworkers left, my wife started yelling at me, saying I was a major asshole. She called her parents, and they sent me an angry message saying they couldn't believe I lied to my wife to avoid a vacation with them. Am I the asshole for lying to my wife about the length of my work trip, even though I knew she wouldn't allow me to skip the family vacay? This should be, am I the idiot for not making sure that you You cover your bases here? Exactly. God, don't you know people know how to fucking tell a lie? Mm, this is bad is he the asshole i think so you think I he should have asshole. sucked it up yeah what if he i think this is what you do what when if you have makes family. your family if it makes you uncomfortable to be around someone's family Too well bad? i think we we don't know enough information here right if they're just they're obnoxious they're in each other's business it's like it's family there's parts about family that are really annoying if they are discriminating against you True. if they are assaulting you making there, you there feel are pe- things, like a piece of shit yeah yeah, there are things that really cross the line and maybe those things are happening. We don't know that information. All he provided is that they're right. obnoxious. They invade your privacy. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. yell mm-hmm. to communicate mm-hmm. and they ask invasive questions. Mm. Very this rowdy. sounds like annoying things, but is it enough to lie? To, it's hurtful to your wife, I think, to part of being in a marriage, in my opinion. Part of being with someone you love is spending time around their family when you don't want to. Totally. It's a compromise, you know? Yeah, there's there's kind of give what and takes in, in a relationship. And I think lying to your partner is never a good idea. I think honesty is the best policy. And so I vote asshole. Okay. I What's vote your I vote asshole too for lying. Now, it'd be one thing if you straight up were like, I just don't because there's kind of two things to the story here. Part of it is you don't want to go to your family's gathering. Part of it is you're lying about it. I think you're, the lying part makes you a total asshole. However, mm-hmm. I will say that if you really didn't want to go or whatever, you know, perhaps you have the get out of jail for free card once a year you can use. If you're like, oh, I just don't want to go to this mm-hmm. thing, then mm-hmm. you should be able to like stay home, especially if it does somewhat interfere with your work trip. But I can understand it. It would be a little annoying if like, you know, you have to work for two days and then come just for one day to the Airbnb yeah. or whatever. So, like, I kind of get why you didn't want to go, but I think you're an asshole for lying to your wife. That's never a good idea. She'll find out, especially if you have work friends over you, big dumbass. Yeah, and it probably was important for for her that you spend time with her family. And I'd be I'd be really hurt if Josh was like, "Your family's loud and annoying. I don't want to go. I don't want to be around them. That would really hurt just me. That would cause a fight. Okay. In my opinion, I wouldn't be cool about that." be like dude this is part of being with me is being around my family if they're you know not being yeah hurt and making you you feel bad yeah yeah no i agree i would say the only reason why it may be valid not to go is because you already had that work trip planned and it kind of overlaps so maybe it would be easier to stay home but still even then Mm -hmm. sometimes you gotta do things that aren't easy though for those you love it's true so all right verdicts in (coughs) asshole i object Oh, oh, we have an objection. I object. Okay. I object. Well, all right, Carly, hit us with your objection. Okay, so I get it. Like I object. <laughs> I, I I do think he's the ass in the sense that he lied to his wife, right? He shouldn't have lied to his wife. He should have covered his bases, obviously. But I mean, wait, what if he just wanted a couple days to himself at home, like unbothered, whatever? He why can't, is he not? This is I guess this is why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I feel like he 
is this valid? For, like, this is valid, I feel. I feel so like you think that besides the lying part, him not wanting to go because he just doesn't want to go is is okay. Well, hold on. Another thing, too, is the wife ratted him out to her family, right? So yes. why would you... Yeah. Ca- why would... Why, okay, just me thinking. Why would her wife... Why would his wife tell her family that, hey, like, so and so, like my husband didn't want to go because yeah. he hates you guys. Like, that's going to put... Pu- pu- yes. That's going to, like, you know, that's Make- going to cause, mm-hmm. like, a little bit of tension between the husband and... And the in-laws now. I do agree so, that that move may not have been good for her. No, it wasn't smart. And that's what I mean. Like, I th- I think that if he was going to lie, he should have lied well, which he didn't. And he's an idiot for that. But I mean. But don't you think when you get married, you're marrying like the family? The family becomes your family, too. So you kind of just got a deal. Totally. But there are so many fam- family members that I don't even hang out with because I'm like, I don't want to hang out with you. That is actually T. There are. I, I'm sure there are people who are in your family or whatever, you know people who have family members that they choose not to really hang around yeah. for whatever reason. Yep, I actually do. And that's a that's a valid reason. To, like, you don't... Pe- like, a lot of people are like, oh, I just don't want to associate myself with this family member because of whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So... If you have a, a pretty valid reason, I think so. I mean, obviously, you have... You're an American. You have the right to not go. Oh, no. <laughs> But I'm saying, are you the asshole, though? Is it is it hurtful to your partner to the, lie to them to be not around their family? The that would really hurt my question feelings. question was, am I the asshole for lying to my wife? Yes. I yes, say yes, for lying. But I think that there's a lot more to it than just you're an asshole for lying because you shouldn't have. You should have been honest, obviously. Or you should have just fully lied. <laughs> fully committed. <laughs> fully committed. Well, fully committed. Well, what if the wife, like, he knew? I kind of can see that. Like, what if he knew there was no way... He, he was honest he would have like had to go maybe like she's like yeah not gonna be cool with it either like, way and, so and i feel like I that's gonna been. cause tension between the husband and wife like why you're dragging me to this family event that i don't want to come to so like why why be miserable at an event where you're not where you don't want to be you know what i mean yeah sometimes you gotta just sacrifice for the people that you love exactly that's true that's, okay because see it the other way why can't you just suck it up to be around my family because you love me and therefore my family comes with me and I love them so you can at least suck it up and spend some time with That's them. True. Again, people, this is, does not include family members who are abusive or, you know, hurtful. Yeah. Um, it's more like if they're annoying or you like, yeah, don't, they're, they're not like, necessarily your bestie. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do it. That's this part of part of life and it shows love to your partner. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I think that's kind of like a relationship problem for them totally you know especially that there's not that honesty there so yeah i agree i agree with that so you don't object you still think he's an asshole does the decision hold um i'm still gonna say asshole but warranted (laughs) a warranted (laughs) asshole yeah all right warranted asshole all right sydney what do you think asshole yeah i gotta say asshole just because the lie yeah yeah that's what would get me that does it for me too should have been honest Agreed. Right. Let's move on here. All right. Okay. So, am I the asshole for making my daughter wear a dress to church? I am a 35 year old female. My husband's a 35 year old male, and we go to church regularly with our kids, a 12 year old male and a nine year old female. I don't have a problem with girls wearing pants in general. I think if a girl wants to wear pants to school or around the house, then that's fine. But I feel in certain times when dressing nice is in order, then she should wear a dress. My daughter is a bit of a tomboy, she plays soccer. I hate the term tomboy. Ugh, so such so annoying. annoying. She plays soccer, watches sports with her dad, and wears pants the majority of the time. And overall, I'm fine with it. But today, when we were getting ready for church, we were dressed nice. And I was in one of my Sunday dresses, and my husband and son were in some of their nicest button-down, button-up shirts and khakis. My daughter came out of her room wearing a shirt and pants. I told her to put on a dress because we were about to go to church. She said she was ready for church and wasn't wearing a dress. I told her she needed to wear a dress, but she didn't want to. I told her to put on a dress and she kept saying she didn't want to. And this went on for a minute and then escalated into an argument where each of us were shouting so loud that neither of us could be heard. I got tired of the arguing and I knew we would be late for church. So then I firmly told her, now listen, daughter's name. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, go to your room and take your shirt off and take your pants off and put a dress on right now. (laughs) She went back to her room and came out a couple minutes later wearing a dress. And then we all went to church. 
My daughter hasn't spoken much to me today and seems upset. And I am wondering if maybe I went too far. I feel like she was making a bigger deal out of it than it needed to be. And I also wonder if I went too far with it. Maybe you were making it a bigger deal than it needed yeah, to be. That's so weird. Why do you... <sighs> so archaic, dude. <laughs> Who uh, gives a fuck of all God. the things to pick a fight with your kid about? About whether they're going right. to wear pants or not. And also, I don't know if it's worse that it's coming from the mom versus the dad. Like, I'm trying to think if the dad was telling the daughter to put on pants, I'd be like, you fucking put on a dress or to put on a dress. I'd be like, you put on a dress, bitch. But then <laughs> it's coming from your, like, as yeah, a mom, you yeah. think you would kind of understand even mm -hmm. more so because mm -hmm. like traditionally in society women are the ones that are wearing dresses there could be a million reasons why she doesn't want to wear the dress dresses make her uncomfortable she doesn't want to wear them she just prefers pants she's not comfortable wearing a dress i mean there's it just goes on and on it's it's such a personal decision to get on your children this Ugh. is what bothers me about parents who act like their children are their little puppet to make into whatever they want. I get to dress them. I pick what they do. I, you know, force them down right. a certain road. Like they are the product of you and you are just like you bought them at the store and you get to just make them into In what fact, you want, dress them how you want. She literally goes talking about, oh, she's a tomboy, plays soccer, watches sports with her dad, wears pants. And I'm overall fine with it. Yeah, that sounds negative. Like, like oh, I let her do that. Yeah. It, if she said, I embrace those things about her. I, you know, she just the fact that she even used the word tomboy. Yeah. I hate that. Term. Your kid one day is going to remember these things. Like when you leave the house one day, you look back at your childhood. You're going to remember the times that you got in a fight with your parent because they tried to force you to wear a dress. Totally. It's one thing if your kid rolls out like you're going to a fancy church and your kid's wearing like ripped up sweatpants, a wife beater and sweats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe or like a bra. Yeah. <laughs> like something, a stained you know, shirt or there's something. things where you like yeah. guide your children a little bit like, hey, th let's find something more appropriate. But if she's already wearing an outfit that's completely acceptable that you would have let your son, son wear, wear, that's where the problem mm -hmm. lies. So can we all agree? Mom is asshole. Mother is asshole. Verdict is in. Thank you. No, uh, no objections here. Thank no you. Objections. No objections. Wait, you need a second. Am I the asshole for honking at another driver who cut in front of me at a drive through each time she tried to order? So this person says, this line at the Starbucks... I went to was really long and I was in line for a good 20 minutes until this lady in a Mercedes tried to cut in front of me and eight others behind me in the fucking drive. -thru. Damn. I laid on the horn and oh. tried to block her. So it is in the drive. -thru. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. In the drive. -thru. I laid on the horn and tried to block her from cutting me, but she succeeded anyway and flipped me off. Damn. I'm the type of person who will not let someone get away with shit like this. So I waited until she pulled up. And as soon as she tried to order, I honked. She then looked at me with a dirty look and gave me the finger, which I already had a middle finger of my own ready for each time she made an attempt to order something. <laughs> <laughs> I honked and sometimes laid on the horn for three seconds. I stopped as she drove off. We then ordered and went about our day. Am I the asshole for this? I mean, no. That's, a, <laughs> that's probably funny. annoying for the yeah, barista. Exactly. That's the only thing I think that would be kind of... But still... It's a little excessive. I would be pissed if someone <sighs> cut in front of me and there was eight people behind me. I'd be pissed too. Uh, but you know, I'm trying something new in life. Oh. I've been learning about this new philosophy called the let them philosophy. Oh, I've seen on TikTok? Yes. Yes. Let them. Yes. It's actually very interesting. Whenever someone does something that would normally make you angry, you just let, let them. Let them. And you don't think about it. You or let makes it go you for your worry about sanity. something that, that could happen to them. Yeah. Let them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let go and let. Mm -hmm. the How successful have you been with this? Um, I've been on it for about four days. So, oh. <laughs> but honestly, I've had some moments where I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let this happen. Do you let tell them be. like live I, and let learn? Like I'm letting you. Like you no, say, I say it to I'm myself. I'm letting oh. you. <laughs> I let them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's impressive. Josh wants Holly to stay up 30 minutes past bedtime. Normally, I would freak on that. I've been like, you know what? Let her. Yeah. What's Let the them. worst that can happen? Yeah, it's true. It's, I've been happier. And it helps with Four the whole days of anxiety of like control. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, she's an asshole. This woman for cutting. But like, is but life going to go on? Yes. Yeah, it will. Just like mm -hmm. you said yourself.
Yep. I'm too afraid to flip people off now because I'm afraid they'll pull out a gun. Me too. And I am really bad about, I love to honk at people and flip people off. You like do. I, yes. I love to honk. And Josh never <laughs> honks. And <laughs> sometimes people do things and I literally reach over and oh I honk the God. horn for him. <laughs> oh my God. John did that one time to me. I <laughs> lost my shit. That is so rude I to know, a driver. I know. I'm, I am bad. I am a backseat driver for real. Which is odd because you never drive when you're... No, that's why I drive from the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> I did but not when know I you do drive, I Oh, I honk. I love really? a good honk. Oh, I'm, a I'm trying not to because now I'm afraid. And Josh has told me, like, you need to stop doing that because you never know you never know. be honking You're going to piss someone off. They could follow yep. you. They could... Yep. Pull out a weapon. You don't know in America. Yeah, I'm not really into the honking but nowadays. I cuss but I cuss in my car. I'm like, fuck you, you piece oh, of shit in my too. car. But I do too. I don't let them know. That but I'm I guess pissed. the question here is, is this person an asshole for doing this? For honking? I say no. <sighs> I say no. Not wait, asshole. that's mine. Oh, wait. For, oh, right, yeah, right. you read this one. <laughs> not, not asshole. asshole. Here, I here. object. Ooh. Hey. I think... By you honking, you're just as big of an asshole as the you're person cutting. Worse. Yeah. Mm. Tea. Okay. So, you know. You're stooping down to that level. Yeah. Okay. So uh-huh. she's in, so they're both assholes too. Yeah. You. I kind of just think I see you should have let her go, let her cut. Maybe next time she won't. Maybe she will. But mm. mm-hmm. I don't know. See, I think a better approach to this would, would have been like, she said, she, you know, you don't let the lady cut, but she made it through anyway, right? You just so kind of give her like a little, do? you just give her a little round of applause, make her feel like shit. Oh, I do be that like, too. You know, do like a little Sarcastic. like thumbs up or something. Like, Get a bat from the back of your car, break her windshield. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Actually, yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> no, but find like a make large her, rock. Find a large rock and throw it at her windshield. <laughs> no, but like just make her feel like shit. Like congratulations. Like you got what you wanted. Like, mm-hmm. are you happy now? Mm-hmm. Like you just ruined everybody else's day. I kind of like you know that I mean? move, the clapping thing. Get out of your car and give her a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. That's I've done that to nice. people. I've done that to people and not got in my car, but like if someone cuts me off or does something stupid, I'll drive by them like same. I do that like, too. Really obnoxious thumbs up. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's Excellent good. work. Yeah. But Sydney, okay. Sydney uh, disagrees. I just am like really non confrontational though, because like if I hog at somebody, I don't want to drive past them. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, if they're, like, not going on a green light and I honk, I'm like, yeah. Okay, you know, what's, you know what's so funny is, like, anytime that somebody honks at me, I'm, like, looking. I'm, like, I, like, twist my entire body around oh. and I'm, like, l- staring at them. And I think it's so funny when they're, like, and I'm, like, just look at me, you asshole. You're the one that honked at me. Oh so look at God. me. In my, look, tell me in my face. Honk tell at me, me in my face. face. I've had times where people have honked at me and then they try to look at me and I just act <laughs> like I have no idea. Like, I just look down. I cannot make eye contact. Oh, same. I always... <laughs> Honestly, no, me too. <laughs> Dude, so it's so funny. I feel like it's the human thing to do when someone does something dumb when you're driving and the other person does something dumb. You're like, fuck you. Like, what the hell is wrong? Mm-hmm. And then if you do something dumb and then they get mad at you, you're like, oh, calm down. Like, what's yeah, the big deal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so true. <laughs> like, it's recently, so true. Oh, my God. I was driving in this mall parking lot and I had the stop sign and then these people were like <laughs> merging in and I was just not paying attention i started going and they like almost hit me and this woman was like so mad she rolled out her window was like yelling like what are you doing like you're and i was like yeah i fucked up but i kept in the car i was like oh calm down like it's not a big deal and i'm thinking like if the roles were reversed i would have freaked the fuck out on myself oh yeah totally I'm over here like, oh, settle down didn't even happen nothing even happened go about your thing (laughs) that is the truest thing though Oh, oh lord all right let's all right. go to the next one all right am i the asshole for being uncomfortable with my boyfriend's friend calling me a bitch for context i am a 31 year old female living with my boyfriend mike who is 34 mike has a friend named victor who comes over a lot yesterday victor came over and to watch basketball with mike victor asked me to pass him a beer so i passed one over but i dropped it it didn't crack open or anything, but he said, nice one, bitch. Oof. Oof. <laughs> I was honestly shocked and just said, excuse me. He started laughing and Mike joined in. I was very uncomfortable and genuinely didn't know what to say. I told Victor that I didn't appreciate him calling me a bitch. And he got super defensive and said he was saying it jokingly. I said, it doesn't matter how you were trying to say it. I am uncomfortable. He got very huffy. Of course he did. And said, I was just being sensitive and then said, you're probably going to accuse me of being a sexist now, aren't you? Can't say anything these days. Ew. 
This was wild because A, I didn't say anything about sexism and B, what do you mean can't say anything? Can't call women bitches unsolicited anymore? What even was his point here? Mike hadn't said anything during the interaction until I called him out. I asked him why he wasn't defending me. He said, I don't know, babe, you're being a bit dramatic. At this point, I'd had enough. So I told them to leave and they went to Victor's house to watch the game. Up until this point, I thought I was in the right until Mike texted me angrily. He said I'd embarrassed him in front of his friend by being a melodramatic social justice warrior. Mm. He said Victor didn't mean any harm. And it was just like how my friends call me a bitch lovingly oh, and jokingly. Boy. Uh-uh. It's not the same. He also said it was uncalled for me to kick him and Victor out of the house while Mike literally lives there. I said it's completely different because my friends are make sure that I'm okay with it and don't say it in a derogatory manner like Victor did. Plus, my friends are wonderful women who have supported me for years, not some friend of my boyfriend's who I barely know. And I was supposed to just let myself be disrespected in my own home. He calls me annoying again and then turned notifications off. He slept over last night at Victor's house and hasn't come home yet. I think I might be the asshole because it's true that my friends call me a bitch. Although it's very different, as I said above, it's possible that it confused Victor and made him think it was okay. I also didn't mean to make Victor uncomfortable and put him in the hot seat as a guest in my house. Am I the asshole? <sighs> I think that's a, a unanimous. I'd say set so. on three. One, two, three. Not the asshole. You are not the asshole. You forgot the gavel, Sorry. Judge. This is why <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> okay, repeat on three. One, two, three. Not asshole. No not one says asshole. it with me. <laughs> not asshole. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this courthouse is a fucking disaster. <laughs> Dude. Uh, not guilty. God, is of Victor being an asshole. dumb? Yes. Yeah, Don't Victor's you know dumb. that when friends, when women friends call each other bitches, it's an endearing term. Yeah, it's like owning you get, it your own word. Exactly. You mm -hmm. don't get to, ra especially someone who you don't know that well. Oh, I'd be so pissed. If, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> if someone, someone called me a bitch. Nice one, bitch. And then was like, oh, can't see anything anymore. Oh, and I would rip Josh up if he didn't defend me. Oh, yeah. Oh, but he'd be so mad if some That's random guy fucked. called me a bitch in our house. Mm -mm. Hell no hell no and okay if he, let's say he calls you a bitch and you express to him how that's not okay and then he's like you're right i'm totally sorry i apologize i didn't mean to hurt you i'm very very sorry okay people can apologize and own up to their shit but the fact that he was like can't say anything anymore you're so sensitive yeah and, and now like, oh, you're gonna call me a sexist aren't you oh mm. i God. hate men like this such trash just Drives learn just learn and move on just really? say, yeah. oh, I'm Just, really sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to yeah, offend you in your house. I did. Totally my bad. Yeah, she probably would have been cool with it. Dude. God. So mm. She deserves somebody better than Mike. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that Mike Mike's was like, an asshole. Mm, you're being a dramatic. You're being melodramatic and a social social justice warrior, blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> I think that's annoying. That's so annoying. Ugh. Social justice warrior. One time in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you tell him <laughs> holding, like on, holding on to this one. <laughs> no, my little ex boyfriend called me the c word, which you can't say on YouTube. See anyway, you next he Tuesday. The, yeah, he called me the see you next Tuesday. What? And I got pissed and told John I was. I made him text the guy, <laughs> and he did. I think so, but he was like, "This is so awkward." Because John wasn't involved at all, but he was like kind of friends with him, and I was like, "Listen to what this guy said to me," and he was like, "Yeah, that's not cool," and I was like, "Aren't you gonna do something about it?" And he was like. No, I he was like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> Husband material. Way to go, John. <laughs> and that's how they're getting married. Mm -hmm. oh, God. What did he say to you? Like, what did he say to you? Is it over text or? Yeah, it was over text. Cause... Why were you texting if you weren't with him? <laughs> uh, because we, so basically, I'm a, I'm a Giants fan. This guy was a Cowboys fan. Oh, <laughs> the, this Giants, is where the... the Giants won the Cowboys. Or it's Giants. Cow Jesus. <laughs> Oh my god. The Giants. Sorry, Charlie's like farting really bad. I think I'm getting like gassed up over here. It's horrible right now. It's like my eyes are watering. Okay, anyways, I texted the guy. I was like, haha, Cowboys lost. Go Giants. And he was like, fuck you. See you next Tuesday. And I was like, ah! I mean, I totally like instigated it, but also you shouldn't yeah. call someone that, especially in middle school. But mm. anyways. Well, he is the asshole. Yeah, he is the asshole. Charlie's is Charlie's, Charlie's the asshole, the right, asshole now. right now. Seriously, bro. 
Are you sure it's not the pickle juice around you? No, it's definitely farts. Unless Kendall's farting it up over here. And I'm, I'm not. You. I swear to God, <laughs> it's I would probably tell you. fucking Kendall. It's not. She says she doesn't <laughs> fart. <laughs> What? <laughs> you literally have told me that before. No, I don't really fart out loud. Josh has like never in? heard me fart. What? Ask him. Dude, You've this never... weekend was bad for me. I'm not a farter. I don't fart that much. This weekend was bad for me. I was going wild. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. I want to hear something really cute and disgusting. I'm going to out John right now. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. Poor John. Last night, <laughs> I was on the couch when he was in the kitchen and we farted in sync. <laughs> oh, shut up. up. You guys just like rip it at home. <laughs> that was like it looked. I was like, "Why oh are we farting in sync?" He was like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> nice, love that for you guys. It's Meant neat. to be. Do you guys oh, fart in front of each sick. other? No, me and Josh don't either. Like, That's Jared doesn't though. Josh Josh doesn't I think he literally like, goes to the bathroom. So Josh like, tells me he goes outside. <laughs> 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 he takes the last outside. <laughs> Is that really weird? You, I swear though, yeah, I'm not really not. Ex would fart we would fart other. in front of each other all the time. It's not. It's a normal thing to do. Mm. I think that me and Janelle are just some nasty bitches, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, I honestly think I think it's totally normal. I think I honestly make it uncomfortable because my sister's the same way. Like they, they just whatever oh, they, yeah. they're open books. And like mm. me though, it makes me. I just feel like after that, it would be like awkward. Like. Mm. You should so do what it is, and see what happens if it gets awkward. No, I'll get embarrassed, and I don't want to be feel that way. <laughs> I don't feel that way. What's like a good time to start farting in front of your partner? What's like, a good time? Yeah, how much like, time? How has much to time pass? has to pass? Like, obviously, I'm not. I'm not gonna. How fart. much time passes before you pass gas? I'm 13 years in. I don't think I've ever farted. With Josh, am I the asshole for telling my family about my future brother-in-law's past? I'm a 37-year-old female, and I come from a close-knit family. I have two younger siblings, and my sister recently got engaged to future brother-in-law, FBIL, as they call them, who is a 23-year-old male after dating him for around a year. We all know him well, and I have always gotten along with him. He comes from a rough background, but he has always been very polite and charming. But he doesn't talk about his own family or about his upbringing. My sister says it's a painful topic for him, so no one ever pushed. But recently, we had a family event where a future brother-in-law attended. He was quiet during the day, which was odd because he is normally high energy and sociable and then disappeared for a while. When I went outside for some fresh air, I bumped into him. He was emotional and said that it was a hard day for him due to negative associations. He ended up offloading some quite shocking things from his past, including that his he has a history of very serious drug use, including needles, and that he has done sex work with both men and women. I felt for him at the time because he was so upset, literally crying on my shoulder. But afterwards, I felt more and more uncomfortable. I still feel bad for him since he clearly regrets it. But it's very shocking to find out he has that kind of history and it does make me feel differently about him. Obviously, I told my husband Oof. Ooh, about what future brother-in-law told me because I didn't feel comfortable keeping it to myself. I also told my sister because I didn't know how honest he had been with her. It could impact her decision to marry him. She was angry and said she was fully aware and it doesn't make her think less of him. I know others might disagree, but I decided if my sister and future brother-in-law weren't going to bring it up, then it was my responsibility to make sure my family had the information they needed to make an informed choice about what kind of relationship they want with him. My parents agreed that it was the right thing to do and were grateful. My brother said he could see my point, but didn't think it was my responsibility to share that information. My brother's wife thought I was out of line. When my sister found out, I told our family about future brother-in-law's sketchy past. She was very angry. She is now refusing to speak to me altogether because apparently this has affected future brother-in-law quite badly. Oh, duh. They are no longer engaged because, quote, he thinks he's not good enough for her and no one in my family has seen him since all this happened. Obviously, this wasn't my intention and no one said he isn't good enough. I think it's naive to pretend that you see someone exactly the same way after finding out they're an addict. Whether you like it or not, they there are risks that come with that lifestyle and relapses are co common. I'm concerned that my sister will get hurt and I don't think it's unreasonable for my family to have access to the same information I do, especially when they're inviting him to their homes and their children around. Am I the asshole for informing my family? Oh my God. Well, yeah, I say yes. Totally. I say she is the asshole. That is fucked up. First of all, the fact that he trusted you enough to tell you that information, yeah. that was probably hard for him to do. Mm -hmm. To open up to you, you should have been so honored that he would trust you with that. 
Right. Some of the keep it to yourself. Right. Let let them figure it out on their own. I think it's one thing for her to maybe go to her sister and say, like, oh, that's hard. Because I see I see what she means about wanting her sister to know. But what are the chances that he wouldn't have already told yeah, he's her gonna and tell he's going to tell you? Right. Or you could have been like, oh, does my sister know about this? Yeah. Like, ask hey, him. How you, did you right, tell my sister the right by chance about this? Like, Totally. Ask him if she knows. And if, she, and if he says yes, you do nothing with this information. And honestly, even then, I think maybe... I think you're an asshole for multiple reasons. One, yes. I think you're an asshole for being like, I feel way differently about him now because he's he's had yeah. a drug pa- a past with drugs and also has had done sex work in the past. Yeah, you're just judgmental. You're just fuck. being judgmental. And he can't be around children now because of that. He, right, because he's past, an addict. That's fucked up. Like he... <sighs> and you ruined their relationship yeah. over it. I would be pissed if you, I were your sister. You went to... If you're going to tell your sister, okay, that's one thing. I think it's lame for you to judge him and be like, oh, I see him totally different now. And I think it's really lame for you to tell the rest of your family. Yeah, that, that is that not is your business to be telling the rest of your family. And also now to be like, well, they need to know so they can make an informed decision because they have kids. That, that is a- bullshit. That is a load of shit. I feel like there was you just wanted to go and gossip and rat someone out. Totally. Let him. Maybe he had planned on filling her parents in on it more and no. he doesn't have to he doesn't owe them shit no. if it's if it's between them as long as i think if you're telling your partner who you're gonna marry yes maybe it's it's a good idea to make sure they're informed but that's that's the only person that needs to know about it mm-hmm. right and maybe yeah. they don't even need to know about it i don't know i i'm curious what people's opinions are on that should you share your whole past with the person you're gonna marry no i well, don't think so. i don't think you really <clears throat> need to to do that either you don't really need to tell anyone but the fact that he opened up and told you. That's so bad. That is horrible. Now, I am curious why the engagement was cut off because he thinks he's not good enough for her to that. So does that mean that That's he so left? That's so sad. Yeah. Because she's, because the sister got like pissed, it sounds like at her sister. Mm-hmm. And it affected future brother-in-law very badly. Yeah, because he probably feels like, oh, now your whole family doesn't yeah. accept, accept, accept me. Why would I want to go move forward into this marriage where I'm going to be forever judged by my wife's family? Well, especially because, like, I mean, telling, you know, just going off of this, you know, this response or this like mm-hmm. post, obviously the sister is extremely judgmental. What's who's to say that, like, I mean, she literally says that she sees her future brother-in-law differently now. Right. So, I mean, the h- chances of her family having that same kind of, like, you know, that same kind of reaction to him mm. are pretty high. So it's like, yeah, why, you know, like, I it's agree. It's a whole bunch of bullshit on her part. I agree. Really, really bad. That's really sad. Yeah, especially that he's confiding sad. in you. I feel bad for him and her. And especially because, like, he, like, this is obviously, like, he was very vulnerable talking to her about this. Yeah. Like, he was, he, he trusted he, her. Yeah. And, like, I mean, she literally said she's like, she said that he was always very, like, upbeat and very, mm-hmm. like, yeah. social and very, you know, like, mm-hmm. friendly. And she saw him, you know, walk away or whatever. He was not in a good mood. He was, you know, emotional. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, it takes, it takes a lot. It it takes some people a lot to get to that point. Yeah. And when you get to the point, like, that's a very vulnerable, Yeah. you know. Totally. So, I don't know. That's, that's really fucked up. That is. All right. I think we're all in agreement here. You are the asshole. asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my friend that laziness is what makes her unattractive? My roommate, 20-year-old female, who is also my friend, has never been confident about her looks. She complains. She never likes selfies nor taking pictures with herself in it. She is mildly overweight, but her meats are well distributed. (laughs) What? Her meats? Her meats are well distributed, giving her good curves. What a weird (laughs) fucking thing to (laughs) say. Okay. She has freckles and acnes. (laughs) <laughs> but what? not very obvious unless you look closely. She has full lips and they are a little unhealthy because she has poor blood circulation. She has amber eyes and her eyelids are thick, making her eyes look small. Oh my God. <laughs> this is your friend you're talking about? What a bitch. Distributed meats and thick eyelids. <laughs> That's fucked up. Overall, when she says she looks unattractive, I agree. 
I don't have any ill will towards her. She also never wears any sort of makeup, nor skin products, nor shave, nor put any effort into any way she wanted to be. Not saying like it's a bad thing, but that's just what she does. I don't want to describe myself because that seems to be a little awkward considering I am the one writing, but (laughs) that's convenient for you. Yeah. But just know that I am making myself feel good and look good on camera. Oh, this isn't something I am born with, but I work on it every day. So we were talking on random stuff earlier and somehow we brought up looks. My friend went on and said that I am lucky to look attractive while she has always been unattractive. I used to give her some advices, but she <laughs> spread me oh off. Oh my God, they are not a type. <laughs> Learn how to distribute your letters better. <laughs> <laughs> I used to give her the same advices, but she'd always brushed me off saying nothing works on someone as unattractive as she is. However... This time, I think I got impatient and crossed a line. I told her that laziness is what makes her unattractive. She could just work on something, be it the usages of beauty (laughs) products and treatments, exercise, anything, and they could have made her look so much better. She admits that she is unattractive and has always just been too lazy to put any efforts into change. She is quite mad at me right now, saying I am just shaming her for her looks. I feel a little bad, but I think what I said is true. And if she's not proud of how she looks and is too lazy to change, then laziness is the reason she stays this way. Am I the asshole for saying that to her? Um, Damn. Uh, I don't know if we even have to discuss much. Do we all agree? Yeah. You are. Oh, this is not my role. <laughs> Say it. You are. The ass- Not the, the ass. ass. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. No, you are definitely the asshole. How rude. That is horrible. She's your friend. You're a shitty yeah, friend. Yeah, what a shitty friend. No, this is... The, when See, someone is having a talk like that, this is the time where you, you tell them all the other things that make them a beautiful exactly. person. And the things that they have, even physically, that you think are beautiful. Even exactly. if you have to, like, make it up. Like, you, totally. you tell people, you hype up your friends. I this agree. is your friend. If... I will say if all of a sudden they're like, oh, I really don't like this thing about me and I really want to try, you know, to do whatever to change it. I would say, oh, you should support like your friend and be like, oh, good for you. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm, I wish you all the best of luck. Like, I think you need to be a supportive friend of whatever they have going on. But if they're like, yeah. oh, I think I look like shit or whatever and I'm sad about it. I'll be like, well, you're lazy. So fucking fix it. Yeah. That's not giving advices. No, no. <laughs> like if someone's were given. making a lifestyle change, obvious because that's the one thing is like I will say that I think when you're really good friends with someone and someone wants to make a lifestyle change or cha- whatever, not even a lifestyle change something or has a different approach to something, then I think you want to be supportive in that person's journey going through that. Yeah, but if they have, if they're not intending to do that right now, then you need to continue to just support them in whatever way that they're living. That's yeah. literally what your job is as a friend. It's one you thing I'm if, saying? if your friend was able to, or was saying something like, oh, I wish I knew how to style my hair. Right. I wish I knew how to apply makeup. Do you know what I you could do say, to make, change this yes, thing about whatever? And asks for it. But when you're just unsoliciting, you know, get, make kicking her when she's yes. down, saying you're yes. ugly because you're lazy. Yes. Yeah, how do you even question this? Obviously, you're a bad friend. Obviously, you're That's an horrible. asshole. No shit. You asshole. Yes. God. She needs to learn how to read. I mean, type and read and yeah. Type you know, and read. <laughs> give some advices to her. Advices. God, that is bad. This person sounds really ugly, to be honest. This the the yeah. poster. Like I will not describe sounds, myself. Mm, they're but. like, oh, I try really hard to make myself look better or whatever. Mm. But Miss sue here with her thick eyelids yeah to go into like her like physical that's things that so she can't weird. even yeah, change, can't even change yeah. it's fucked up haven't you ever Amber heard of the eye. thing that's like if you notice something on someone and they can't change it within five seconds don't say anything at all that's i like that that's a good like way. it's like mm-hmm. oh you have a fuzz in your hair or something yeah. like that or like oh yeah. your hair looks out of place right here but yeah you know, whatever yes but if you if it's something Unless about someone them, asks you for right. yeah. advice real advice on how to do something but like i overall, would like to do this like if yeah. your bra is showing, I'd be like, "Oh, hey, handle your bra is showing." Yeah, I know There's you something probably in your teeth. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's different because you can. That's a quick fix. Like, not like mm, your nose is a weird shape. <laughs> <laughs> your eyelids are whatever thick. the fuck she or said. Too thick. thick. Your meats are evenly <laughs> distributed. Ew. God, what an asshole. Seriously, mm, horrible. Case closed on that one. Case freaking closed, folks. Am I the asshole for disinviting my girlfriend to dinner? 
with my bosses because she refused to learn etiquette. The team I'm a part of was invited by some higher ups from the company to have dinner with them. Although the dinner is not really work related, it still has an impact on your career. And this invitation means that you are about to go up and they want to get to know you outside of work. The dinner is high end. I'm talking your basic manners won't cut it and you need to know about high end etiquette. They ask you to bring someone with you. Many bring their partner or a family member. And my girlfriend was my first choice and I invited her, but I asked her to please learn about etiquette. Dinner is at the end of December. I don't know when this was, but whatever. She was offended, which I understand. (laughs) Yeah. See, she says she has manners and I know that, but I told her that it's not enough for this type of dinner. I told her that she knows I attend these dinners a few times a year for business and I have seen people who have manners just like hers struggle and become self-conscious. I told her she needs to learn enough to get by and I offered to teach her or hire someone to help, but she still refuses. She claims that I'm ashamed of her, which is not true. My family and teammates' friends know her. It's just that in this case, the scenario and implications are completely different. This is where I might be the asshole. I told her that if she isn't willing to do it and it's her right... I'm not going to take her with me and I'm going to take one of my parents or one of my siblings. I told her I was sorry, but this is very important for my career. And well, here I am. Am I the asshole? That's what kind tough. of etiquette do you really want this person to have? Yeah, I'm, I think that would help if we actually knew what like, the things they need were to, like, that they were doing wrong. And, <laughs> yeah, like, are we talking needs to go to cotillion? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, no, it needs to know how to eat with which fork first. Or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that shit is so annoying. Did you go to that? Yeah, you've asked me like a million times <laughs> on this show. Yes, right, I went sorry. to Cotillion. <gasps> I forgot. They taught me how to cut a banana. That's when you learn a Cotillion? I thought you learned how to like dance and stuff. No, I learned that too. Oh, hell yeah. I learned how to do the fox trot. Oh, yes. The fox trot. Yep. I was so rude. I was so rude. I still feel bad. There was this one boy who was really sweaty. We like <laughs> did like the boys were in the inner circle and we were on the outside and then we'd like switch yeah. partners and go around oh and i remember you one know. boy was really sweaty and i wiped my hands all like really obnoxiously it was like ah and it stuck with i you felt forever. awkward and so i wanted to make him feel more feel awkward, awkward. Oh, yeah. it was mean it was very mean i feel bad you know we should all uh us us four should should you know go and you know do a cotillion and yeah or learn some yeah. manners at 30, I, 30. Of course yeah i never With learned the kiddos yeah. i never went to cotillion Obviously, because we farted in front of our partners. <laughs> <laughs> My parents did not give a shit about me going into Catalan. Yeah. It was just a way for me to get like out of the house and do something. They're like, oh, They're yeah, like go. yeah, go with... Because other kids in my neighborhood were doing, we're doing it. it. So I, my mom just sent me with them. I didn't retain anything. I don't remember nothing. <laughs> nothing? Not, not the fox one thing. Uh-uh. Nothing. Nope. Um, okay, so is this person the asshole for making their partner have better manners? I think this is really tough because i don't know i mean if we had more information it'd be helpful like what kind of company is this i do understand that there's network what what is going to happen your career is going to be impacted because your it could partner be. doesn't have it. really yeah some places like that in corporate are very intense like yeah. if like, you oh, bring well, someone who's embarrassing and like it's just like you're shunned. it's just not a good but look for you at all is she being? that's what i'm saying can she not cut her banana or like <laughs> is she what or, is she doing? I mean, there could be like little things, you know, like some people are really ri- like uptight about like small shit. Like if she doesn't put her napkin on her lap mm-hmm. or if putting she- your elbows on the table. Exactly. Like yeah. That. Like that's so rude. Look, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Or if you're reaching over somebody like you just and it's extreme. But if someone like, does that, some people will ju- they make a decision right then and there. Also, like. like- he did say that it's it's a bunch of higher ups. Like he probably wants to make a good impression on them. They're really gonna like pull him into the office on Monday and be like, "Look, probably no, I'm sure your girl was a damn mess." Well, no, but no. They would- she doesn't know how to cut her banana. <laughs> <laughs> he just wouldn't get invited again, and then that's yeah. You just wouldn't, or you wouldn't move up. Really, that's so crazy to me. That's corporate. Well, I think also Ew. like you have to think. Let's say you're at a super fancy event, whatever it is, and you bring someone, partner, friend kid sister whatever and they're a total embarrassment you'd be embarrassed too like we can't act like you'd be like oh well it's not me so who cares mm-hmm. you're bringing them so they're basically saying that she does have high-end man she or she has she, her basic manners but that won't cut it she needs to know high-end manners and etiquette i don't know exactly what that means they're not yeah. going i don't think they're going to cheesecake factory <laughs> is what I'm saying. Right, right. <laughs> right 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 but Damn. does like 
so it must be like please and thank you I'd and, be like, and not my chewing with your mouth open like and burping out loud you for must the night. not know rent a girlfriend for the night yeah, yeah. let's not cut it then like the basics yeah. don't burp don't chew with your mouth open that's what i'm saying if she doesn't want to learn that she can stay home and he can just rent a girlfriend with manners for the night but then she was pissed well, he didn't actually. Come, that was my idea. <laughs> that didn't actually happen. She's she says she claims that I'm ashamed of her, which is not true. I mean, my family. I don't think he's an asshole. I don't know. This is hard. What if someone like your partner told you that you needed to like, in order for you to go to their dinner, you need to learn up. some more. Yeah, better manners. Like, I don't think if, I would be offended. I don't think so either. I think I would be like, okay, you want to pay for my little manners classes? All right, I'll do it. That's yeah, true. I'd rather know I than can like clean not it up know. for one night. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I, mean, I can act like a, you give me a few hours, I'll come out acting and looking like a full different person than who yes, I really am. <laughs> yes, like full Princess I can Diaries makeover. Turn the cussing off. I can turn the burping off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like which fork to use or where it goes. Yep, you start from the out and go inward, and then you see. Don't. I didn't even learn that. <laughs> Everything you can tell you your napkin, right over my head. Too much play, ADHD for or on that. Your nap, lap on your nap. Napkin on your <laughs> no lap. No napping on don't the table. Take a nap on the table. Right. Don't put your phone. Don't up drink there. too much. Oh, right. Don't yeah. drink too much. Um, Interesting. That sounds like I just would not want to go to that. But like, if you had to like curtsy, <laughs> a curtsy. <laughs> the CEO's coming in curtsy. Curtsy. <laughs> oh, like what is this? The I royal family. Things like that. Oh, it sounds so awful. But are you an asshole? an asshole? I don't think so. I mean, I don't sometimes think so either. To, unfortunately, in the world we live in, you kind of have to do the bullshit to get to the top. You and gotta fake it to make it. In somewhat the same realm as our first one, which was the whole like person getting out of going to the family reunion. Yeah. And we kind of all agreed like sometimes you need to suck it up. And even if yeah. you don't want to do something, you yeah. do it because you love your partner. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the same thing. Like even if you think you, oh, I don't need to learn how to care. Fuck that. I don't care. Well, yeah. if you want to go, then you need to do it for your partner because you love them. It's not like it's coming from him necessarily. This is like he is being pressured to have you act this way because of the situation he's in. And right. He's trying to achieve his dreams right right he's not just like i'm in i took you out to dinner and you were a hot mess you yeah you were manners. a fucking disaster at chili's get your ass <laughs> to <Italian. laughs> i agree i think i don't think he's the asshole i actually don't think so no all right Let's the verdict see. is in verdict is in not asshole does anyone ob object no. no, I think no we're in okay. All right, that's it. Final verdict. Case closed. And that's going to close us out today, that baby. Was over for the trial. Yep. We're like Judge Judy up in this bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was fun. I love doing Am I the Asshole. This is one of my favorite segments, Me man. too. It is really a good, good time. time. I, I wish... Some good ones. I wish she has, uh, spoke Spanish because there's this... Um, this um, Judge Judy type show um, on like Telemundo called um, Caso Cerrado. And mm. it is the most... It is the spiciest... Damn, fucking, you should like watch it for us we, and pull some yeah, stories. Oh my god, translate no. it. It's I I should because it's unhinged. Like really? <laughs> unhinged. It's so fucking funny. It's funny. It's good. Just take my word for it. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> amazing. Okay. Well, we'll have to tune in. Sweet. But that is gonna be it for today's sesh, you guys. It's been fun hanging out with you as always. Go and check out our merch. Yes, Milehiremerch.com. Mile um, we have limited quantities, actually very limited quantities this time, much less than we did last. So correct. HMU, if you want them. Hit me up. Mm -hmm. right, right. That is the cool thing to say. Took me a second. We are cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, well, we're gonna go a drink day. our nasty pickle juice. We'll be back next week. We'll see you on the next sesh. That's it. Right. But until then, keep it keep fresh. It fresh.